Do 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 do. Do 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 do. Oops, sorry about that. Confluence of things I know a lot about metaphysics and photography. Um, I'll do a quick little video, at least I'd hope it to be quick, on the uh, metaphysics of uh, photography. It's interesting how everything, including human emotions, actually follow fields. Um, there are two uh, conjugate fields in the universe. One is centrifugal divergence, the other one is uh, centripetal convergence. We ultimately have force and motion, inertia and acceleration, which are respectively uh, the geometry of force, i.e. magnetism, which is toroidal. Interestingly enough, like this old tangerine, is a toroid. And then the uh, geometry of inertia and acceleration, which is in the shape of a hyperboloid, which is the negative image of a torus. Torus inversion is a hyperboloid, and uh, hyperboloid inversion geometry is a torus. In other words, the yin and the yang of the entire universe. So everything in photography, people love to pontificate and engage in logomachy. Where's one of my favorite words of all time? Logomachy is a fancy word of saying flapping your lips. But not flapping your lips for a purpose, but flapping your lips just for the sake of flapping your lips. <laughs> but um, the metaphysics of photography follow uh, fields. Let's uh, talk about the core fundamentals of the metaphysics of photography. Whatever the photograph is, and nobody has ever not my opinion of fact, has ever summed up photography in such a simplex fashion as this. And this is undeniable, that all photographs, when seen by others, you know, even though they could have different reactions depending on their own personalities, are only designed exactly like fields. They have a reaction like fields. If it's a good photograph, I, I meant to say. If it's a boring photograph, it doesn't do anything. Like you're walking down a hallway, you see a boring, like, oh yeah, it doesn't do anything. Yeah. It's kind of like uh, driving fast through a sheet of paper. Didn't do anything. <laughs> they either impel you, they uh, propel you or repulse you, or they stop you. And this emotion in reaction to, by uh, objective identification to, with, or in the photograph, when you see a famous photograph, they always only have three reactions. They either draw you in, it could be something, you know, really um, seductive or, uh, shall we say, hot, right? It draws you in, makes you want to look closer, kind of like a vortex draws you in. It could uh, propel you away. It could be something completely revolting. Well, how could a famous photograph be revolting? There are countless photographs of... Uh, of uh, like Vietnam or you know famous or like tragic pictures even though they're incredibly repulsive they are famous photography because they are freeze frames of horrific things and uh, they uh, move you away but they are famous photographs that people will actually and do buy it's like why would somebody spend a fortune on a repulsive photograph because it's movement in the some some gain of fields whether it's plus one draws you in or negative one pushes you away um, the net result is the same it is a moving photograph someone says that that piece is moving it means it's either drawing you in or pushing you away another reaction is that it stops you makes you think it might not draw you in, which it does. If you're thinking, it does draw you in. So when you actually are stopped by a famous photograph or a moving composition, you are being drawn in. It could be the case where you're both being drawn in and pushed away at the same time, which, of course, is uh, just another attribute or a split between the two. But all famous photographs are like this. Um, off of that and getting on to what people desire in creating compositions. And I used to have a whole lot more time, other than product photography do for, for, uh, for uh, work, where you're actually following the client's lead. And of course, you have to have a vision of what sells the product. Um, people build a visual uh, idol to the logo. So if you go on Instagram, for example, there's a section, I look at it every night, uh, just because I find it interesting where uh, the top uh, photographs of Instagram are. Even though a lot of them are highly uh, seductive photos, there are uh, an enormous amount of photos that are uh, they're idols to the logos, or to beauty and to symmetry. Some could say golden ratio, but they, they, 
when you, people will say golden ratio, their golden section, they have absolutely no idea what they're talking about. They love using those words, but they don't actually understand the meaning or the implication thereof. But people build a composition that is a logos, uh, a visual idol uh, to the logos. The other reason for photography is kind of uh, obvious. It doesn't have to impel you or, pro or uh, propel you or repulse you, but it's the human desire for uh, the stoppage of time. We'll actually take a photograph of a happy moment or a happy place or a family. And all human beings love uh, to cling on to time, kind of like wanting to cling on to a spot in the, the rivers of existence. And as the old saying goes, you can never put your feet in the same waters twice because the waters are always flowing. It's impossible for anybody, for God or human, to put your feet in the same waters twice because time is a measure of magnitudes. Time is not a thing itself, but it's the measure of passing of magnitudes. And it is a desire for power, and that's what photography is. It is a type of power, and since the mind is uh, transcendent, as all forms of metaphysics have said, is always transcendent to time, People love uh, generating photographs that freeze time and they always uh, gravitate our mind and our recollection. Or smriti isati, as the old words are. I don't know why I'm using ancient Pali. Nobody knows what I'm talking about when I'm talking in ancient Pali. But they freeze uh, time for us so that we could obviously reminisce and bring ourselves back to happier places or things which are the waters that you can never step your feet into. Like someone that's passed on someone that has died, a loved one, a child, you'd like to remember them, the child when they were innocent and young. But it's all human beings desire to freeze time. It is a desire for power and control which human beings don't have, but it is a nice tool. It's almost a magical tool for freezing time. And that's a huge reason for people loving photography and loving the results of photography, obviously so. But that is the metaphysics of photography. Lastly, so, uh, there's uh, evil intents and purposes for because any tool could be abused, kind of like a drunk behind the wheel. Um, people will use uh, um, photography for power seeking from others or through others to paint a narrative because there's no such thing as a true photograph. All photographs are lies. Uh, a master photographer, for example, who's meant to take pictures of a hotel to promote the hotel, it could be like a dirty roach motel. But if you use the right lighting and the right filters, you can make the dumpiest hotel look like a five-star hotel. You can take, this is what famously is done in hotel rooms, is that these cramped little rooms <laughs> for the hotel, and someone will take an ultra-wide lens, like, wow, that looks really spacious. It's like, no, I just use a wide-angle lens. <laughs> People will, uh, you know, seek power or, uh, or subservience from others by knowing how to manipulate photography. They want to get people to believe things that are not true, uh, get people to buy things that they really wouldn't want to buy. It's kind of like uh, nobody in their right mind would buy a McDonald's hamburger. But when you see a billboard with a McDonald's hamburger on it, <laughs> it's taken by a master photographer who fluffed up the hamburger, you know, and he put in this lettuce and he'll spray oil on it and do all sorts of unholy things to it, not only bef at, before it's shot, but, you know, just manipulate the heck out of it in post-production. And it's nothing but a dirty lie, you know, it's designed to manipulate you. It's the same people that go out and people believe, unfortunately, photography, or the works thereof of photographers of, like, important events. And they're total lies. What you could do is, like, at least people, and it doesn't matter if it's video, people will sit in a canoe uh, where all these houses are around the water and make it look like the whole town is flooded. But really, it's only like a couple inches deep. I don't know if you remember, remember that famously from that news broadcast. They were paddling down the street and made it out like there's enormous tragedy. And then someone came walking by. And you could see that it was basically right up at their ankles. So it was not tragic at all. Uh, that was a video, but people do the same thing in photography. That's just a famous example that I could think of. But... All of photography follows the metaphysics of fields because everything is interconnected and at its fundamental basic level, photography follows fields and it follows metaphysics. It either impels you or propels you or it stops you. It can do a combination of both. 
And that, of course, would be like at the plane of inertia. In the case of fields, there is impulsive and repulsive and stasis fields in the case of the dielectric. Um, as I peel this tangerine apart, you could see its toroidal nature. And here is its little uh, vortex or its little navel where uh, you get drawn into the center where nothing is. But that's not the nothing of nothing. It's the nothing is meaning nothing manifest. Because everything manifests comes from the unmanifest. All things Cartesian spring forth from the anti-Cartesian or from counter space. And that, of course, is mirrored throughout all of uh, nature. It's also too mirrored in the minds of human beings. And this is the metaphysics of photography. Um, if it's not about uh, seeking uh, beliefs or feelings from others, photography that's created for oneself, it's designed to, in the good, the good uh, photography, to impel you, propel you, or to stop time. Because uh, the ability to do that is something all human beings are desirous of. And that's the reason why people do. Not the only reason, but the primary reason why people love and use and enjoy the photography and the works of photography. Because nobody controls time. Time is the measure of magnitudes. All human beings uh, live, in the, live and suffer and die in the, in the sea of magnitudes and the passage of the masses and magnitudes, the measure of which is time. And photography is a way to take a slice out of uh, the toroid of time and stick it on a frame and mount it on the wall and enjoy it for as long as your time on earth lasts. Thank God these are sweet. <laughs> Sorry, never supposed to eat on camera. It's a bad thing to do, especially a fat guy. I'm no, I'm sorry. Thanks for watching.